out, who's going to be dual screening us <laughs> on her phone and uh, and and here in person. Um, we have everyone here except Lindsay. We're not sure. Hopefully, she uh, joins us shortly. But we'll get started in the meantime and start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the Okay, adjustments to the agenda. I don't believe we have any. No. Uh, public comment. Do you have a member of the public if they wanted to say something? <laughs> no? Okay. Uh, six, old business discussion of the artwork on the Joan Benoit Samuelson track and field. Uh, in your packages, there's a, a little packet of info titled Freeport High School Track Artistic Intervention. I didn't know we needed an intervention, but apparently we do. Um, Oh, and what do we do with that? Oh, yeah. I'm going to give it over to you. So I think that last time we discussed this, uh, you asked us to bring back a few options. So we have brought those back, and I'll have Cynthia kind of show those. You have them in your packet. But we're also going to project it on the screen so that those watching from home can also see it. We're going to get hit with the screen? Uh, maybe. <laughs> Okay, it's coming, it's warming up, you can see it coming. So I'm gonna start, I think it may be your third page into your packet. Um, you had asked to have a rendition made of um, moving um, this tag line to uh, the center so it just flows more so uh, there is no finish line and this one has the lines through it um, still so that was one one rendition so that's kind of closer together and then if we move to hold on a second here slide this up so then um, someone had requested that we take the lines out of the letters uh, so the lines are still behind there um, and that's without the lines through the letters. So those are those two options. The rest that you're going to see are going to continue to have it without the lines. Um, so you'll you need to decide, you know, which ones. I, th I think our purpose tonight is to decide which ones are going to be presented to the students. Um, I think that's what you requested to have uh, the survey. The students uh, complete the survey. And here's the rendition of Falcon Pride. Again, there's no lines through the letters. Let me move my arrow here so you can see it clearly. And then Freeport Falcons. And then without anything. And again, just a reminder for, for you and for the folks at home, the, the water uh, and the landscape and the mountains represent the, the three towns that make up our RSU 5. And then um, I think the, there was uh, some question about whether the bleachers would be in the way. So uh, Adriana uh, put this together so that you could see what, you know, with the specs that he had, what he feels that it would, it would look like from different perspectives. So that's one perspective. This is a closer perspective. without people. Yeah, they should have put some people in the stands. <laughs> and this is from the angle just to the left side. And I think that's the, yeah, that's the last of the slides. So we can go back and however you want to have discussion. Of us not at the table. 
Oh, put this up. Okay. Yeah, so if we could, gotcha. And you all, you have it in front of you, but I just wanted you to see it a little bit bigger. So. <laughs> yes, Sarah. Um, Cynthia, I was curious, or maybe this is a question for everyone. Um, when we present things to the students, are we going to present the obstructed view, not just the unobstructed, no bleachers view? I get. I was thinking that it would probably be really just the un, un, not obstructed <laughs> because I think what we're asking them to vote on is just which saying they like better. But because right, I don't open. think we're asking them to vote. Do you want the artwork? I think that is that's our call whether we want to have the artwork or not, um, and the inclusion of them is just what do we want on the wall. Um, I guess what I sort of envisioned was if we could have some mock-up boards that have all, if we have three, all three of the sayings, what it would look like. And then, I mean, I, I'm not opposed to having a couple other views. I mean, I don't think you have to have it in every saying because I think it's essentially the same regardless of what the words are on the wall um, with the obstruction. But Actually, I say that, but I don't know if that's necessarily true because I think the Freeport Falcons and the Falcon Pride are sort of jammed towards the middle, which is the part that would be obstructed. So. I also noticed they didn't give a view from the right side, and I'm imagining that's because it's pretty well obstructed by the garage and the bleachers. Yeah, I mean, unless you're standing between those two, right? right? And I, I don't know much about track, but which direction do you, like, run around the track? You would be coming up by that by yeah so if you were down the end by the garage you would be coming up the bleachers and then coming around yeah. here and then going yeah counterclockwise so, so you would not approach from the left no i don't think so right <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> right. so i i mean i'm with um sarah that it would be good for the students to see the unobstructed, but then the obstructed. So it may not have to be for each one with the obstructed, but I think they need to know that the bleachers are there and what it's going to really look like when right. the bleachers are there, if we ever get them. Right. <laughs> uh, this is our wish, wishful thinking here that we'll have bleachers right, right. in front to block yeah. it. So um, I also was wondering why all the Falcon Pride, Falcon uh, Freeport Falcons, all the alternatives to the tagline are without lines, because I personally prefer with lines. So I was hoping that we could have those other slogans with the lines. And someone, Jeremy and Kate, I think had chimed in about the protect the nest. That was one that I was hoping I could see also for another alternative. I think the, the and maybe I'm wrong, and I don't think we voted or even did a straw poll, but it seemed like the consensus was without the lines people preferred. So I think that's why they did it without the lines. Um, I know that the the artistic folks at Nike prefer the lines. They, yes. They prefer the lines. And then the, I don't know if it can be could be seen at home, but the one with no words on it, they actually have that listed as not recommended. So <laughs> they didn't like that version. So, um, I mean... Yeah, another comment I had was they seem to be um, intent in convincing us that we want to have the letters bleeding outside of the walls. I'm not sure that's all talking about that effective. Like I think I would like to see smaller font yes. and the letters be circumscribed without the wall itself. I was going to say the same thing. Yeah, I agree with that too. I don't like, you know, reduce the font so you don't have to you can see the whole letters but the problem I mean what I the issue I have with the Falcon Pride and the Freeport Falcons is I feel like we jammed it in there to fit it in and we have all the space where we could make Freeport bigger yeah. but then we have to make Falcons or Pride smaller right 
Um, and then, you know, do you, I don't think you want to have different size font, but Sarah. Is it possible to just, given that the right hand side is obstructed when you put in bleachers, does it make sense to put Freeport Falcons or, Free, or Falcon Pride or whatever just on the left hand side and try to put all of it and just make it a little smaller on the left? I just think it would be neater that way. You've, you don't have to have anything on the right hand side, I don't think. We've already got a big doorway or whatever that is. Or you could do Freeport Falcon Pride. <laughs> then you have <laughs> then you have more because the, the, the part with more, more words looks better. Right. I mean, when I look at it, these versions, there is no finish line is the most appealing to me because it fills the most space. Yeah, I just yeah. don't like it. I don't. Uh, yes, but I don't like the saying. I mean, <laughs> I have to say, I, I show this to my son and he said, oh, yeah, that's a Nike tagline. That kind of put me off. I was like, really? You caught that that quickly and you're not even that commercially based so uh, you knew that right like that but the interesting thing is is it was it was Jones tagline and Nike is her sponsor so they picked it up it's Joni's tagline they were second not the other way around um, that th I that's what I've been told I mean I I don't I, I haven't talked to the Nike marketing folks to confirm that it's the name of her movie, yeah. So she's got a, 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 I don't know, 58 minute movie or something about her career and it's called There Is No Finish Line, the Joan Benoit Samuelson story. Um, so I think it was hers before it was theirs, which to me makes me feel a little bit better about it. Um, Although now, is it recognized as a Joni Benoit tagline? It's recognized as a Nike tagline. Well, it's the Joan Benoit Samuelson track and field. So I think the no, connection No, I would understand be made. that, but when, someone reads that tagline they don't think oh Joan Benoit they think oh Nike well if they know her they do well my son knows her and he wasn't cued into that yeah unfortunately I wish it were otherwise what did you say because we're old <laughs> right <laughs> Um, I just want to say, ooh, yeah. <laughs> that's okay. Um, I like them, and I, I, I don't like the one with the lines, but I like all of them, and I think that um, with the little tweaking, I mean, I agree with some of the things about like the font and stuff, but I mean, I think the real, the real point of this was to let the students decide. And so I feel like if we just nitpick every single design, we're never gonna get anywhere like that we kind of wanted this that was what I felt like we left the last meeting with was that it was gonna be left up to the students my take on it was if we were comfortable that we had three that we mm. love we could live with all of them then that was the way to go I mean I don't think it was ever the intent that the students would pick prior to walking into the last meeting that was just something we sort of came up with on the fly so um, you know I don't I don't know if yeah, I'm we felt that favor. we weren't comfortable with these three, regardless of which one they picked, then I don't think we should send it out for a vote from the students. So it's four. Right, it's four. I meant like tweaking, like people had said some tweaking things that were just like font. I mean, that's different than like, I don't like that saying, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I just don't know how you make the font work with the short words. I thought your idea was great actually. Freeport Falcon Pride would, would appear to be able to fit there really well. I mean, but I, I'm not a designer. I think so. you could do that if you keep the small Freeport, right? You're you're stuck with. I mean, unless we want different size font on the left side and the right side, that would, I, would that be aesthetically that pleasing, it. right? You don't think it would all fit in that font? Well, no, because it would essentially look like this with pride here, which oh, is no, fine. Oh no, I was saying. I think you were saying. Were you meaning back up the Freeport? Yeah. So it 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 was like Freeport Falcon, and then on oh, on the here. other side yeah. is pride. Yeah. I think it would all fit. Yeah, but. Right. Yeah, here, yeah. It looks more like there is no finish line. Yeah. Font. But it would be more words, so that would be okay. And well, then you just leave the right side blank. Like it is on the this one. Yeah. yeah. And if you have smaller font, you can move it up so that it's not so obstructed by the bleachers. Because right. right now the letters are pretty low. In fact, they're not centered in the middle height-wise. But if you move them up a little bit, then they're less obstructed. Stir the water. <laughs> the water. Yeah. So we had asked for these renditions before the email about protect the nest, and I'm also trying to keep the committee 
apprised of what's going on to the committee uh, preferred the no lines through the letters um, and so I just told them that there was another option that might be discussed tonight about protect the nest and somebody else says that's a different tagline for the Cardinals of oh, the Arizona Cardinals. It is, but it also is ours because it's on the back of Naomi's shirt. Yeah. And so, so the feedback we got was that that's a very new thing and it's used for like one sport, that one. I want I wanted to mention too with the whole pride thing, that's something the middle school is targeting this year. That's their I don't remember what it all stands for, but that's their motto this year is pride and it, you know, in the, the acronyms. Um, and so I think that would be a cool tie-in too because all those kids are going to be very familiar with that mm -hmm. in the middle school. That habits of work? I can't hear you, Lindsay. Oh, sorry. What was the pride acronym? Perseverance. Is it habits of work? Respect. Uh, habits it, of perseverance. It is connected to the habits of yeah. work. Yeah. Okay. So they made it, I think, yeah. So each one of those letters stand for something, something. different, like yep. perseverance, respect. So um, preparedness. It's preparedness, respect, integrity, determination, and, and engagement. Could we fit that on the wall? No, I don't think so. <laughs> We need to build another building for that. Um, Go around the building. <laughs> so, I mean, the, the idea of showing them the obstructed view of just one of them, is that to give them the, the option to vote no on all artwork because they wouldn't like it or? No, they would have to pick one. Yeah. Wh whichever option got the most votes would be the one that ended up on the wall. But at least they would know what it would look like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not opposed Do to showing that, I mean, on the board. I, I do think that if we're going to do that, we need to show all of them like that. Because I think if you just so, show one, you're kind of pushing the vote maybe towards towards one another thing. one. Right. Because right. you won't like it just because it's blocked right. yeah. more. Okay. Um, I mean, that's more of the semantics of the voting. Um, we don't have this as a vote tonight. Do you? Because I didn't originally think we needed a vote but if you're wanting a vote well, I think we could add a vote I think if you all agree that you know which options we want we can go forward with it um, okay do we agree on what options we should include so the point was three or did you say four I mean I think three would be ideal so last time you had as a group talked about going back with the four so it's what you was know, the four? But no wording, just the art. But no, we didn't have protect the nest in the group. No. Okay. So we had Falcon Pride, we had Freeport Falcons, we had there is no finish line, and then blank. Oh. Say again. Now we have Freeport Falcon Pride. Right. So instead do we want blank. that one instead of, say, Freeport Falcons or Falcon Pride, and just have that one instead? So then we're two? Three. Three. They're, uh, the tagline, the Nike tagline, the Freeport Falcon Pride, and then nothing. Do we want nothing? I, that was my idea, and I don't like it. <laughs> are you I mean, now that I see it, I'm like, what, what's your that? Idea? Like, why is that just there? You know? I'm just yeah. like, <laughs> I, th so, I think I mean, we could I, give them the option, though. You have to have a little though. story about why it's there and what <laughs> right. it is. <laughs> I mean, I think if there's a third option, it's nothing on the wall. But Not, why, why oh, do they well, paint? Oh, well, that's an interesting... Yeah. Like, oh, they no, don't or, like the artwork at all. Just leave it as is. You but know. Why know do they recommend not doing that? Because I think it, it looks a little random, maybe? That, I mean, I didn't know if there was a specific... I don't know. Did, did they mention why they put not recommended for the one with no words? No, I just, it just, just nothing. I think it's just a compare. I think it's the Microphone. Yep. <laughs> I, I just think they, they feel like a message. It, it, the, it completes a whole thought and a whole message mm -hmm. for the community. Yep. With the words. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I, mean, I, I think don't think it would be. Go, go ahead. I don't think people would understand why it's there if there wasn't something on it. Right. Okay. Um, I never really, now that Cynthia said that, I didn't really think of it as 
how this is all one message and so I with with the meaning of the um, what the background is kind of not being all that clear I think that um, providing an option that includes that pride um, that unity message is important so I just want to add that my two cents on that and I mean other than that I go back to my original um, impression which is I still don't like it at all but <laughs> I don't like the mountain thing I don't I don't like it but um, I, that's a losing battle so I'll just give my <laughs> input on the uh, saying and I do like the Freeport Falcon Pride as an option um, I think we do want to have maybe the three words um, and maybe not an option with the two words so I'd be in favor of replacing Freeport Falcons and Falcon Pride with the Freeport Falcon Pride okay so is there consensus that we like Freeport Falcon Pride better than the two alternatives individually? I Until do wonder whether you want to see it before then you... Exactly. Yeah. We could see it and then... Lindsay. And I guess come back. I just think it's... And right. I, yeah. I do. I think a lot of these we thought were great individual. until we see it and then we're like... Mm. <laughs> yeah, but I really liked... I mean, when just my first impression tonight, flipping through, I was like, my favorite was Falcon Pride. I liked how it's centered around the hole. It's kind of like, well, do, do people actually come and go out of that hole? No. No. It's, no. it's where we walked out, like, through that little courtyard. I mean, there is thing a door, the but right there's there. not, like, athletes not are streaming out of there. Like, Because I was kind of like, that would be That's cool, cool. Yeah. if they were, like, running out. <laughs> no, it's right down the hole here. Yeah, yeah it's where we went out um, the other day. Is this a real building? I like how it's kind of centered. That's not a real building. And um, I don't mind the big letters overlapping the, the edge. Um, but I don't know that I would be opposed to the Freeport Falcon Friday Pride. We don't want to be Freeport free Falcon Fried. No, we don't want to be that. Um, but I might like that, too, if that were displayed. So, so we want to see Freeport Falcon Pride. And do we want to see... I mean, well, if they're going to do it, <laughs> is it easy enough to just see the Protect the Nest version? Just so we can see it, or if people sort of let that go? More options? Well, I, th I feel like right now we're down to two. We're down to there is no finish line and Freeport Falcon Pride, okay. unless we want to add a nothing option. I, I think absolutely nothing. Keep it as. Oh, well, absolutely. So no art whatsoever. No art. Well, you know what that looks like. We don't need a rendition, <laughs> right? <laughs> no, no, she's saying as a vote. Choices. As, as a choice on the ballot. Take a picture. But you have to have the bleachers in front, okay? Yeah, that's right. We need the rendition with the bleachers, right. Um, okay, so do we want to see those two for our next meeting? And then, I mean, we're not on a time. I mean, <laughs> it's going to be a while before it's done. So uh, I think we got time. Um, and then we can... Yes. Um, so was the protect the nest, nest not an option? You started to say it was, so it's not something we're allowed to use or something? I don't think it's something that we aren't allowed to use, but when we mentioned it in the, in the track and field committee meeting, someone went, oh, that's the uh, Arizona Cardinals tagline. Yeah. So I, don't, I, I did jokingly ask, is it copyrighted <laughs> before we put it on the wall? Um, I don't know if it is or not. I doubt it is. But um, I think it was just, it wasn't known Craig said, yep, I've heard it. We've just started using it in the last couple of years for basketball. So it's not sort of this widely known phrase. It doesn't mean we can't use it and make it more widely known if we want to. Um, but it wasn't, it's not like the thing. If that makes sense. Beth? Looking at it now, how, if it's going to be protect the, and then nest on the other side, it's going to look. Well, that's what Freeport Falcon Pride is going to look like. Yeah, I guess. Although protect the is not as long as Freeport Falcon. Well, that's yeah. what I, I actually think protect the might fit better because Freeport Falcon is a lot of letters to fit on that left side, but yeah. and nest would be a little shorter to fit between the gap. It would fit nice. I, I, that actually might. I mean, other than there is no finish line, which I'm not either there here nor there on the saying, but the way it looks across the wall is my favorite. Yeah. Because it sort of spans the whole thing, um, but. Yeah, protect the nest. You could put protect on the yeah. one wall, the yeah. nest, yeah. rather than protect the nest. Right. Okay. So they could do that both ways. 
these, these art people are going to be like, why did we offer to help them? Becky, do you take all those options down there? So I'm thinking that you're going to want this packet back. And then you'll have also Protect the Nest, Freeport Falcon Pride as two more options to look at. Yeah, and this one could potentially be two versions. Because yes. it could be Protect the Nest or it mm -hmm. could be Protect the Nest. I guess he's... Er <laughs> Kate? <laughs> Thank you for raising your hand. I guess um, the designer probably... Might have a preference. Figure that out. Yeah. <laughs> He's figured out other things that we haven't agreed with. So, <laughs> yes, Jen. The only thing about protect the nest that I think is a little I'm trying to be a person from out of town, and I think the only thing about that one is that it might like we get it, but I don't I I mean we're going to have people coming here from other I just don't I just think some people not that maybe we don't care what other people think but like that's just a little different than the other two like kind of make a little more sense and they kind of go with athletics like I, I don't know if protect the nest is like what we want to put out there Lindsay I would agree okay <laughs> Sarah you're agreeing okay it, it's our home field. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy falls in the, we don't care what they think. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. I, I feel that way about things. Well, I'm also a little, like, I've never heard that personally, and I've been a part of the school district for a long time, so it just feels like, um, I don't know, it's so, it seems so new to me that I'd rather Did you see Naomi's with. shirt? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very nice. I'm not saying it's bad. Um, I just, I think the Falcon Pride or the Freeport Falcon Pride, just like the Falcon, there's just so much recognition with that and there's sort of a, a comfort level with that for me. I, um, I think that if it's not something that is set, you know, well known and said that the kids won't vote for it. I, I don't think it hurts to give them the option mm -hmm. um, and just see. Right, so if they've never heard of it, they might Then they, like, right, yeah. exactly. Which is also probably what happens to there is no finish line, I would imagine, right? If they don't know where it comes from. So um, if it's just a blind vote, <laughs> you know, like we don't give them any feedback on what, you know, background. Yeah. Do we want to just do like a straw poll about like the size of the letters, if they bleed off the edge or not? Because I feel like there's a lot of different opinions and maybe we could just give some specifics. Well, I think the size of the letters is going to be determined by the number of words on the side but like we could say we don't want the letters bleeding off the yeah, edge you could say or yep. we do want them bleeding off or just leave it up to the designer but I feel like there's kind of different points of view floating around about that so um, who I know some don't like it so who doesn't like the letters bleeding me one like no bleeding you don't like bleeding yeah right all right so that is most of the people um, and then I, I'm sort of indifferent. I don't particularly mind either way. Um, but if we feel like most people don't like that, then if we can give them that feedback. Okay. We can do that. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. So I guess I just want to <laughs> review. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we want to see Protect the Nest and Freeport Falcon Pride. And then we don't. We want a rendition where the the letters aren't bleeding. And, and then we'll also bring you back this packet so you can compare compare all of it. And were we right in the people don't like the lines right. in consensus? People don't like the lines in the letters. Yeah. You and the artists, they like it that way too. <laughs> Not to belabor the point, but just uh, clarity. Are we going to ask for bleeding and non-bleeding versions of every single one? No, I think we're we saying we don't say, like the bleeding. Just no. give us make none. them all mm -hmm. fit yes. in there. Okay. Yep. If that's what if, I mean, if yeah. we feel strongly about it, then that's what it should look like. Unless they tell us, hey, the only way this fits is if this letter bleeds off a bit, you know, then we can make the call, I guess. But you got what you need. I do. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Well, they can fit it. Right. <laughs> well, right. And then we know, right? Like, okay, well, we don't like that. 
No, it's too small. Are we going to tell them to move the lettering up a little bit? Because now the font will be smaller. And since we have the bleachers, we, we just want well. it centered, top to bottom. Centered? We want it centered, top to bottom. Right? Vertically okay. centered. Vertically centered. Right? Well, what about I'm saying Justing, maybe go a little higher. A little bit oh, above uh, center? Above so yeah. that you right can now it's recognize below center. the letters above the bleachers. They're actually readable as opposed to just like seeing the top. Like, I don't you, think we want it so small we could see it all above the bleachers. But more, I mean, it's an, inter it's an interesting idea. Like, um, would the letters be, I mean, right now they're halfway, they're, they're over half of the letters are covered. But if it were a slightly smaller font tipped up, you know, above center, they're still big, and you'd get maybe three fourths of the letter showing. It might I mean, be more readable. I mean, the thing to me that blocks is that little building, which I don't think is a real little building. I think they just added that. I mean, the, the this little one next to the bleachers. <laughs> I mean, that's the only thing that blocks a letter so that you can't read what it says. Right. I mean, even this no, like way everything on the on the right hand side i mean i mean i can see all the letters i mean oh i guess i'm assuming people are going to be sitting there and are those really going to be see through things yeah. or are those going to be steel and then yeah, i don't know i mean does this person really know what kind of bleachers we're buying no we don't know what kind of bleachers <laughs> we're going to buy you and know, then the other question I mean, is is like why it. are people on this side looking at it i mean they're not going to be there right so <laughs> There's nobody would sit over there. <laughs> right. So, oh, yeah, so why are we looking at from this angle? Right. <laughs> <laughs> the players, they're running. Yeah. yeah, if they're watching the wall, we got problems. <laughs> Same with them right. going clockwise around right. the track. <laughs> Good point. You're going to enter from I'm going to enter from here. Yeah. You're going to enter between the between storage the building, house. the garage and the building. So, so you're going to walk alongside it to right. get to the bleachers. Uh, we think maybe you'll see mm -hmm. it as you're in, you know, as you're coming in, it'll be yeah. here. Mhm. Mm uh, to your right. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. To your right. Unless you come from across the I mean, you could come in. There's going to be a pathway from over on the Moore Street parking lot side. Um, yeah, Moore Street will see it. And they'll look at it for the first week and then they'll like stop seeing it because that's yeah. what you do right. when you see something every day. Right. <laughs> Can you see it so. from the highway? Is that the, I don't have no. a really bad nah. direction. You might see it side. southbound. You might be see it coming southbound. It depends on if mm -hmm. CMP takes the rest of the trees out. No, I was going to say that. <laughs> I wouldn't see it. Okay. So, um. All right. So I'm confused about the lettering. I mean, I, you know, are, are we trusting the designer or not? We're trying to get maximum visibility, understanding yeah. that there could be, you know, bleachers there somewhere. So if we can move it up a little bit higher and it's and still on the wall good. and still look good, okay. let's do that. I don't think we want to make it small enough that we can see it above the bleachers because that sort of defeats the purpose of this big splash on the wall. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> I flipped this over eight times. Are we done now? <laughs> okay. So, new business. Consideration and approval of the following stipend positions in your packet. Number seven is um, the positions we're talking about. And I presume Becky will run us through it. So, these are all stipends that we, you approved in the uh, budget process last year. Except for, I would say, the Latin Club is replacing a club that um, doesn't exist at the moment, uh, R World Quest. The girls' C-team basketball coach is pretty straightforward because we have a C-team boys' basketball coach. And you can see what we're recommending for the cost there. Um, then we have the stipends for that we funded last year for the unified basketball and now it's just that it's in the local budget and we need those approved and probably the one that is on here that's the the newest it's worth talking about a little bit is the fitness center coach and this is for to have somebody manning the weight room that's brand new and that would be monday through thursday for the three seasons fall winter spring and the stipend committee uh, reviewed how many hours that would be and came up with the suggestion of thirteen hundred dollars per season so just so i understand these are all 
things we approved in the budget that we approved last year. It's just Correct. they weren't existing stipends, so they had to go through this process of the stipend committee for recommendation and determination of. And obviously, without the points being allocated before the budget, did we budget enough for these points? We did. Okay. I thought we already had the unified coach. We had well, the we did, but it was up, right. But remember, it was just funded through a grant. I oh, think, right. I think okay. it was partly grant funded and partly uh, funded through savings that Craig had found in his budget. Any questions on the stipends, Valley? So I have a comment on the weight room coach. And I know that we, because we had two cut wait, wait. last year in the budget, that we decided not to do this summer. So I'm ready to approve this type in the way it's being uh, approved by the stipend committee. However, for the next round, I would like to see some numbers that show participation uh, in other schools for summer use of gym, because I think that's a time of the year when I would be most concerned that kids don't have enough to do. So if there is enough use in other towns around us to justify us adding this summer, then I would like to see that added in the near future. Do we have kids in general in the school in the summer doing stuff? Yeah? So it wouldn't be unusual if the wheat room were open in the summer? No? Okay. I was just thinking the last thing we want to do is just throw a bunch of kids in the school. Sorry! <laughs> okay. Any other questions or comments on the... Kate? I was just curious um, how we've been uh, staffing the fitness room up until now. Volunteer. So I think it opened Jen in the winter, right? When we did that first phase. And uh, I think the some of the phys ed teachers were willing to volunteer. Do we let them split stipends? Like if they two gym teachers wanted to like split the time, can they do that? Yes. Um, when we met about the fitness coach, we would, because we don't know how many people are going to really use it, so that's that was part of the reasoning why we're thinking, well, let's leave the summer out first and see how, um, you know, the other three seasons will do. And if we have a lot of kids and it looks like they want to come to the summer, that's always an option that could be added. Right, because next summer will be next fiscal year. So, all right. Any other questions on the stipends? All of those. Oh wait, do we? Yeah, I was going to say we need a motion first. <laughs> it occurred to me. John? Second? Kate? Did you second it? I need a motion. Oh. And John seconded it. Okay. John and Kate. <laughs> in whatever order you like. Uh, all those in favor? None opposed. Thank you. Okay. Look at this. First official meeting of the year, and we've already got policy on the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> she's getting through these this year. <laughs> she's not getting bounced at the end anymore. Or she's just giving herself plenty of time to yeah, the end right. of the year. So I think this is the third time you're seeing this. <laughs> so we're, we're very open. Jen and Cynthia are both here to answer any questions you may have, but we didn't feel the need to review it again. But we're happy to answer any questions. You're going to have to forgive me if I forget. Have we reviewed it before, or have we just brought it but not talked about it? I think, I think a combo. Because, I mean, I this recall. would be a second read if we've already reviewed it. No, it's, yeah. a first, it's, it's a first read. Tabled twice. It right. was tabled. You got it in your so we had it in our packets, but we never asked questions or talked about it. Okay. So if anyone still has their notes from April of last year, Lindsay. I'll start us off with a question. Um, Student achievement, why was the line about differences in students crossed out in the first paragraph? I liked that line. So, a lot of, <laughs> in this, when we were reviewing this, um, you know, of course we look at the sample policies and sometimes other policies and there's a lot of extra verbiage in the policy that this is, this is it's almost like that's, that happens anyway there's a lot of things that happen anyway like you'll see down below the the detail around describing some of those things uh, and it just adds a lot more verbiage to it so that's why it was crossed 
off because there was a lot a lot of extra language that made it feel a little bit more verbose I guess or um, it, it it's still in play none of that isn't in play uh, there was nothing erroneous about the information there um, it's up to you I would you... like to keep it in <laughs> um, I feel like there's a lot of pressure on the system for uniformity for the sake of standards it makes sense but there is sort of a yin and yang with you know we we want to provide um, a, a fair assessment we want to have tools that are standard we want to have our grading system um, you guys all get what I'm saying but we don't want to take away from the individuality of the student and right. I just I feel like I I prefer to give language to that in the context of this document because of the powerfulness of standards based at this moment in time and I think it's important to remember and I almost feel like styles. the standards based speaks to this right like you can get to achievement in a variety of ways depending on your learning style and that's and, the intention of right. the system so right. we don't we don't want to forget that no my two I agree with that and further I would echo that sentiment for some other paragraphs that have been deleted the first one is uh, for the student achievement evaluation and that is page one where it actually gives the. Um, where are you? I'm sorry, they're like driving by. Okay, it's <laughs> I K. So, a student achievement, a violation of student achievement. The first page, one, two, three, fourth paragraph. The second half of the paragraph, where it actually um, gives a definition for common assessments. And you have taken that out. I think it's um, worthy of keeping it in. Cause it's good to know what you're referring to when you speak of common assessments. So if you see a, the line about the part that's still there, mm -hmm. um, it's just, it talks about it's across the same grade uh, classrooms within the school and the same grade classrooms within the district. So mm -hmm. I felt that that really hit it because it's, it's, this, it's an assessment that's given, you know, across that's the same no matter how it's developed or how it's designed. I agree. The second sentence just develops that idea further and it refers to common scoring rubrics and multiple measures of assessment. I, I don't see the need to delete it. I mean, if you really feel strongly that it shouldn't be there, I won't be opposed, but personally, it's up I would, to, it's up to I would the leave board. it. Yeah. <laughs> it's up to the board. And the other one um, that I would prefer to leave in is the first paragraph for what has been renamed transcripts and academic achievement uh, which is a statement of belief show me specifically you're on uh, page one yeah on the bottom of ikc oh. the first paragraph of that policy the one that reads the rsu number five um, well, it should be RSU number five, not the RSU number. Uh, believe that every student should choose a course of study best suited for their ability and aspirations, on and on. I think that's a really nice paragraph. I would like to keep so, it So, yeah, come on up. Um, I was just going to add that I think some of the things that we deleted here felt more appropriate for our program of studies and for our student handbook about our beliefs and our definition. We have our proficiency handbook for our parents. I think what's what complicates the policy is if we're defining terms and stating our values and then stating the policy. So when we were looking at it, a lot of this is redundant with what we already have. Something like common assessments is totally different at the younger grades than how we define that at the high school. And so we felt like that just might not um, it's not that it's not important. It just feels like maybe it fits somewhere else. That was that was how we saw it when we were looking at these documents. That's good thinking. I think I dig it all back. <laughs> okay. And I think that's the point, right? We just don't want it lost, sort of, you know, to the ethos somewhere. Like those seem like core beliefs for us right. and as long as we're seeing them you know recognized and and acknowledged somewhere else right as long as they're somewhere else right then i'm happy you know to. I, i'm fine i mean this should really should be a more i mean my understanding of the policies this is more of a clinical mm -hmm. document not as much fluff right jen 
I, I I totally agree with what Jen was saying because I think, and I could be totally wrong about this, but like when you put things in policy, you know, policy can be used against you. And so the more you put in policy about what's happening, what's going on, the I mean, and you we all know parents that are going to say, oh, my kid didn't have a rubric, didn't have a writing sample. I just think it's it's more less is more sometimes with things like this to save your you know, self from some headaches. Which I'm guessing is why we pulled out the specific assessments we're going to use, right? Because well, if those, those change... Then they, mm. Right, the names of them are, that's already not correct right, right. here. So, okay. yeah. And we all know the state just changes. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. if we just say that we will use the large-scale assessments as required, then... Correct. Okay. Yes, Jeremy. Just a, a tiny point, but um, do we need to have those quotation marks around common assessments? So, no. Okay. They were there, and I, we just didn't remove them, so we can. So I have a question on the one on transcripts and academic achievement again. It's the second page, points G and H, uh, where it states that Freeport High School will not use an accumulated GPA or any other, any other method of, to determine a ranking class, and that no individual academic awards or recognitions at end level study will be determined slowly on the basis of GPA. Is that actually happening now? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's current practice for all classes. Okay. So, so do we not have a valedictorian? No, no. Interesting. Lindsay, um, I was a little bit confused by. Let's see, on that same page, the top paragraph, it talks about quarters. Let's see, what is a quarter and what is a semester? I feel like there was mixing terms. Is that? So we have um, four quarters, in our year is divided in four quarters, two semesters. So um, two our- Two quarters per semester? Two quarters per semester. Okay. Mm -hmm. So some courses at the high school are year long and some are semester long. Um, a student in a semester class would have grades come out twice. Uh, a student in a year long class would have grades come out four times. Okay, habits of work will be recognized at the- f Based essentially at the first half of the semester as sort of a check, how are we doing? Is that the idea? Well, it's actually, what it has shifted to is that habits of work would be reported four times a year, oh. recognized. So achievement and habits of work would be every quarter. And academic uh, achievement would be at the end of the semester. So that would be in January and in June. So that's a shift for us, okay. meaning um, that students, um, Part of the thinking behind that is that if the whole philosophy of standards is that students have time to reach proficiency, then we're giving them time. Even the, the many schools are not doing anything with standards recognition of academic honor in the middle of the year. There, lots mm -hmm. of schools are wrestling with this. They're not doing any academic honors until the end of the year. Because if you're saying to a student, you have the entire year to hit a three in all of these standards, we felt like that would be pretty um, drastic for our school mm -hmm. and so feeling like halfway through the year to say this is where you stand so far but to recognize their habits of work throughout the whole year the only thing is it says I mean, am I reading this incorrectly habits of work will be recognized at the end of quarter one and quarter three but they keep reading so the end of three. semester one and semester two academic achievements will be reported as oh, well as, as well habits. as habits of work mm -hmm. yeah. okay so everything it's a little bit two and four weirdly yes. just phrased. habits of work yes. one and three yeah. why yeah. not just say habits of work like you just said like every quarter so that's listed right below when you go down it's separated it says academic honor roll reported at the end of semester one oh. and semester two and then habits of work reported at the end of each quarter okay so in the newspaper for example at in january and june the ninth graders this year will have two lists They'll have a list of who is recognized for habits of work and a list of who is recognized for academic honor. And some kids most likely will be on both. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. We hope. That would be my kid's problem. Kate. I kind of agree with Lindsay on that first paragraph, though it's a little bit clumsy. I would. I, th I would prefer if it is that last sentence said instead, um, like if you said, only habits of work will be recognized at the end of quarter one, two, three, and four. And at the end of each semester, academic achievement will be reported. I think you'd have to move the only. I think only habits of work will be one and three. So that's the only thing we're doing in one and three. If you wanted to say habits of work 
Um, okay, so delete the only. So habits of work will be recognized at the end of each quarter, and yep. at the end of each semester, academic achievement will be reported. This is a lot clearer to me. Okay. Know, maybe I'm to you know, I think actually it's a it's a good point. Uh, what we're trying to say is that this is a shift for us, which probably doesn't isn't appropriate for a policy. So. The only is there for people to say, what happened to on roll at the end of each quarter? So we're saying it's only habits of work. So I think what we can say in the policy is habits of work will be recognized Quarterly. all four quarters. Academic achievement will be recognized at the end of each semester. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because people read the policies all the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's the people right. watching the live remember. stream yeah. right now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm just making sure nobody else has any other questions. I'm trying to get everybody once. No? Okay, Bali. <laughs> You've already talked too. We'll get back to you. <laughs> Bali. Um, so this is about academic honor roll for um, high honors and honors for the new grading system, 375 or 325 or higher. Um, I do get consistent comments from parents about the fact that uh, a lot of teachers think that if you achieve, you get a three. A three is equivalent to say a hundred. So there's concern there that before, um, because four is an exceed that assessment and avenues to get that four haven't been developed yet. Yeah, this is not, it's a little tangential to this, but since we're talking about 375 and going above three, I just want to make sure that the teachers and the school in general is developing enough avenues for kids to actually go above achieve, to go to exceed to a four. So I think there's two pieces to that. One is we're fighting really hard to not say a three equals anything. We're saying a three equals a three. So you won't hear anybody saying a three equals a hundred or what, what, I shouldn't say you won't hear anyone. For the 10th through 12th graders, there are some teachers who this year have decided that they're gonna use standards-based grading and they do have to convert to a number. So for the ninth graders, there won't be any teachers who are saying three equals 100. But I, I don't think that any teacher in this school has been designing assessments to hit a three. I don't think that that's ever something that we discussed. I think we do need to explore more what does the four look like and how are we calibrated in scoring that. But I don't think there's anyone who is thinking three is the highest you can get and there is no four. That's just not really a discussion that our teachers have even engaged in. They've talked about it a little bit with quizzes or classwork and I would agree. Some of those things are really hard if it's either you did it or you didn't and then we've talked about well then that's habits of work. And so I think that's been the bigger conversation than um, it, it, it certainly hasn't been a point of concern of I don't know how to develop a four. You know, maybe it's the nature of our courses or the content that we're teaching, but I don't think that that, at least from the teachers, um, has been a, a huge area of concern. I think it's something we can continue to focus on, though. And the rubrics all have a four on them, right? All of them. So as they're developing the rubrics, there is yeah. a path to a four. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. whether it's attainable or not, I don't know. But, I mean, yeah. there is a way to get a four according to the rubrics. Mm -hmm. I have experienced in the middle school in this transition to standards that there were far fewer opportunities to earn fours than threes and I would just echo Valley's comment that there really has to be, at least in my mind, there should, for every opportunity there is to earn a three, there should be an opportunity to earn a four. Otherwise our top students are going to miss the ability to grow and showcase what, what they can do. Um, I, I have a couple Hold on, different Jeremy's got <clears throat> I just want to make sure it's understandable Looking at page two of IKC, um, yeah. how is it going to be possible to obtain a 375 if, <laughs> you know, how, how will you get that number if, if three is generally the highest, if that, if that makes sense? So three is so, not the highest. Okay, so yeah. four, no, four, four is the highest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So four so will be attainable? So, uh, four, yes. Four, yep. Four. So our teachers have, this will be... Um, the fourth year that they've been working on their scoring criteria. So there wasn't any scoring criteria that was created without a four. Our, our scoring criteria all has one through four. Mm -hmm. um, and so when students get scores in their courses, they will get a score for each standard. Those standards will then be averaged for a course score. So you'll have an overall score 
in math and science in ELA. And I will say, I was sharing with Cynthia, the state does not care about that overall score. They did, that is just for us and parent consumption to be able to say a 3.2 or whatever it is. The state cares about us reporting on the proficiency at each standard to say we, we are guaranteeing a kid is proficient in each of these skills. But then we'll take that score and then you'll average all of your courses together to have a GPA and that's how you uh, come out with the 375 or 325. Has any comparison been done to say, okay, you know, here's our current, you know, if we were to follow the current magna cum laude, summa cum laude structure and say, do we have generally the same number of students with the new uh, grading system compared to the old? So we have the same distribution, if you will? We have not collected so, data yet, uh, but we will. Yeah, so that will be that. Okay. Right, that'll be interesting to see, you know, after that first first graduating class, do we still have the same number sort of in each bucket? Because I, ima I mean, I imagine they change year to year a little bit, but on average there's a certain percent that are in those buckets. It'll be interesting to see. I think what's going to complicate that data is taking out habits of work. Because for some kids that made their grades much, much higher than their content skills and knowledge, and for some kids who are really, really bright and maybe don't have great executive function skills, mm. their, sc their scores have actually been, or grades have been lower. And so it will be very interesting. I would, I would assume that we'll see discrepancies in that, that this GPA is going to be just content skills and knowledge. It's not gonna be habits of work in that GPA. That's separated. Interesting. Cool, thank you. Jen. I do wanna point out on uh, IKC, page three, there's one error that we're going to fix, and it's the one, two, three, four, fifth bullet down. That should say for the classes of 2021 and beyond. We have this. We have the same in the one above it, and it really should have been 2021 and beyond. So we we will fix that. Um, I was I was just going to ask. So if if the academic grades are going to be awarded only at the end of each semester and they're all going is each class going to be a variation of 3.75 3.5 like how do you pull out what a student does in each class as like a grade point average rather than being proficient like is there a difference so the we are deeming a three as being proficient so then the scores will be based on their individual scores in each of those standards. So they'll, they'll be given a grade in, and that's like a combination of work, work habits and academic achievement? No, so that will never be combined. So on a student's report card, it will say ELA and then it will say the standards that the ninth grade ELA class has selected for that class saying this is the most crucial skills in this class that kids have to demonstrate proficiency. So kids will see a score in each of those things. So it might be, for example, that um, in the ELA standards, one is speaking and listening. Some kids are fantastic readers and writers and terrible speakers and listeners. So they could have very high scores in one place, lower scores in another. They'll see that difference. It will then eventually, though, be averaged for a course grade, and then habits of work will be a separate course grade. So They'll what's see the transcript them. going to look like now that gets busy packed. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So is that like a work in progress type thing? Mm -hmm. Cause I mean, yes, I, I just went through that and like, it's kind of hard to even picture what it would look like to like be sent off to like a secondary school or anywhere, I guess. I mean, and we've been lucky that other states are ahead of us. So Vermont is ahead of us. There's some schools in Maine that are ahead of us. So when, when we're going to the league of innovative schools conferences, they almost every single time have one workshop just on transcripts. That's it. So, and then I tend to just steal all the resources. Mm -hmm. And then, so we have lots of comparisons um, to make between other schools and figure out what's going to be a format that's easy to read. Um, our school profile is something that we're working on right now too. Um, and that is basically a marketing tool for our school that tells, that's the first thing that colleges read. How do we determine scores or grades or GPA? And, and every single school, school profile is different. So they look at our school profile and then they'll look at our transcript. And we have to figure out what's a transcript that makes sense. And it might be more complicated. Um, but we'll make sure that it makes sense. But it'll be identified like in the school profile, like you said. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think there's 
redundant bullets in here Num on this uh, IKC says page three of three at the bottom. Official transcripts issued by Freeport High School will include the following. Bullet number two and number six are looking identical to me. So I think just take one of those out. Just like a copy and paste. Yes. Got extra in there. And then, um, in promotion, retention, and acceleration of students, I haven't isolated like what section this would be in, but I guess it would be in section C acceleration. I was wondering if, you know, there's so much, um, can a student who, can students test, uh, test out of, can they, can they test out of a class if they're already proficient in what's going to be presented in that class? Like, could they presumably like take some sort of end of year exam without having taken the class and be proficient and then maybe they don't get it. Well, we, I don't even know if we do credits anymore. Mm -hmm. We do credits? Mm -hmm. So maybe they don't get the credit for that, but they design something as an alternative, like an internship with uh, an advisor report or something that would be engaging and fulfilling for them without having to kind of go through each standard when they already may have. Yeah, and so we already do that right now. So okay. we do that for students who are um, coming from within the district. Um, math would be a great example of that. So um, that's a place where um, two years ago, it was the first large cohort of ninth graders that we had that started in honors algebra two. That's not usual. Usually they start either in algebra one or in geometry, geometry honors. These are an exceptional group of students. And so we have um, sophomores who are taking AP classes that are usually for juniors and seniors. I think teachers try to assess what's the level of the student and not have them um, necessarily put in seat time um, in order to fulfill the requirement. I think that's a shift because I think that used to be m more sequential where we were saying you have to take this class and then this class and then this class. And I think that's changing more and more. We also deal with that already with students who come from other districts who take classes in a different order or sequence mm -hmm. than we do, mm -hmm. or they offer some, we have a new student here who's blown through all the art classes because of the school that she's coming from. So we have to figure out what's a class and often it's an independent and study or it's an online course um, so there's lots of options um, based on student skill level um, I would be interested in um, putting a little bit more language and acceleration um, that's to some of those points and if there is any regular process for like you know can you test out of any, every class I mean I mean is it a because one of the things I think I, I've run into in the lower in the lower grades, not necessarily high school, but um, is the teacher saying, you know, I'm an expert, I can differentiate, I understand, you know, a student is at a higher level, but um, that teacher takes a certain amount of time, say, you know, half of a semester to be able to kind of know where that student is at, and then by the time by the time the teacher, I just think that if there's a, if there's a way to allow for testing of standards as sort of a pretest for a class, if a, if a parent or student wanted to do that, that would avoid the loss of time, like figuring this out like way into the semester. I think what's a challenge about that is that some of the courses here have content that kids will not experience anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And so there is no kind of placing out of that class. There's not another opportunity for students. There's specific science content. There's specific history content. Um, and so there are some places where it's kind of a continual progression of something in others where it's real distinct learning. And so we feel that this is a, a critical skill 
or content that kids have to have and we don't let them place out so so your answer is kind of yes and no mm -hmm. there are some courses that are really based on skill level if it's um, say for for example a world language class that is progressive builds one on the other whereas Western studies is totally different than American studies those are two totally different subject areas that you're even talking about they're just in the realm of social studies mm -hmm. so I think it depends on the content area in the class so I want to caution the board that this is a policy that is pre-K to 12 mm -hmm. and we are not currently equipped to write something like that and abide by it in, in the policy. So if we wrote something like that in, that would be in second grade if they know all the science content that we're committed to giving them a different science curriculum. Well, wait a minute. If the kid in second grade does know all the science content, I'm not saying they would, but I mean, what kind of answer is that? We're just going to sit them through stuff they already know? I'm just giving you the reality of today and so I just don't want to put something in policy that is going to lead us uh, I understand your point. Okay. I think that maybe the language surrounding it was just a little bit shocking. But um, I understand that we don't want to commit to something that's impossible to execute. That makes perfect sense to me. But I do, I would encourage the board to um, continue to brainstorm about possibilities for acceleration because I do think that that um, is something we can work on. Um, we talk about differentiation. I think that we don't really talk a lot about acceleration and it's an opportunity for us. Okay. My question on that one was um, in the retention and the acceleration and I, I see why you struck it because it sort of contradicted itself where it says the superintendent's decision shall be final if the parents are still dissatisfied. It's not really final. They can come to the board and then we're final and I don't know who's after us if they don't like our final decision but um, <laughs> they can go to the state. Um, I understand why you struck it, but does this really eliminate a parent's um, avenue to come to us? I think the purpose of, no, I, I would say the purpose of striking it out is when we had this discussion at the policy committee was that, you know. Can you be closer to the mic just oh, to yes, make sure I'm everybody sorry. Gets. Was that, you know, the educational leaders are the real, are the ones that really should that should be where it's at the the final I think any parent who has concerns we always would want uh, them to come and have conversations and you know talk about it until mm -hmm. you know they feel like they understand why you know it is the way it is so similar to superintendents agreements that that lies solely with her and right okay yeah Did you have more? Are you good? Going back, and I'll make it quick, but there's standards, and then you average the standards so that you arrive at your final grade for any course. What happens if the average is above three, but there are a couple of key standards that the student hasn't met the standard, and they're supposed to have met the standard to actually get the credit for that class and move on? Good question. So they, they have to meet proficiency in every standard regardless of what the average is because that is what we report to the state. So that would be uh, remediation either during the year or during the summer um, and hopefully we're going to be relentless about catching kids during the year and summer would be the last resort. What happens if despite all that support and the added opportunities they still don't meet the standard? Do you hold them back and they don't get the credit even though they got a three mm -hmm. for that class? Right. Okay. Uh, that they would have to, and I think that we'll have to figure out whether a student, um, in the case right now, the student would retake a class or take the online version of a class. And I think that's something we're going to have to explore um, of if a, how many standards would necessitate a student to take retake an entire course. Okay. So how many standards would you expect a course to have? And I'm sure it varies course to course, but it's usually between two and two and six. Okay, so it's not 10, right? So it's not like no. you could have nine fours and one two and you take the class again. No. Okay. But so it, if it's six and you have five meets <coughs> and one two, mm -hmm. you in theory could have to take that class again. Right. But underneath each standard is what we call performance indicators. And those are the more kind of discrete skills. And so that, so, so we'll know 
way ahead of time if a student is significantly str struggling in a standard um, because the performance indicator level is kind of below that. Standard's kind of the umbrella and then underneath that is really what goes into that standard and that's where kids get feedback and scores. So in theory, there's no <coughs> GPA below a three because right. if you don't have a three, you didn't finish and you do it again. Right. I mean, you, you'd have a GPA you, but it, in terms of credits. You weren't getting out of school without a GPA of three. Right. Right. Which makes the ability for kids to be able to exceed all that more important otherwise. Because the band is they, small. Well, right. yeah, otherwise everybody gets a three. So when you apply to college, well, you're just like everybody else. So I hope that that. Well, and so you guys are taking I will say that kids are going to go way beyond the standards that they have to. So their GPA could be much higher or lower based on the courses that they take. So if a student, for example, because we have a set amount of standards in, say, history, that a student needs to demonstrate proficiency in those standards, we have tons of courses beyond that. So if a student did well and then absolutely bombed an elective class that they had, it would hurt their GPA, but they'd already demonstrated proficiency in those particular standards. Whereas a student who's passionate about history is gonna demonstrate uh, proficiency in the standards that they have to do, and they might go way, way beyond the classes that they have to take, and that their GPA would be impacted by those classes. How do it's you just track like all of this. I know <laughs> <laughs> we have amazing guidance counselors, um, but they um, that that's the same situation right now. We have students who do the bare minimum of courses and credits that they need to do to walk across the stage, and tons of kids that go way beyond that they leave with way more credits than they would ever need. But you would expect their GPAs to vary vastly, and in this case, they can't vary vastly, because you have to have a three, or if, I mean, there's a one point difference. There'll be, a, there'll be a smaller difference, for sure. And I think that's why colleges look a lot at what you're taking. Right. So the number of credits will be in the center of the transcript, so that will be the thing that they look at primarily, right? Because yeah. you have more credits, and supposedly you're better student. And even now, I mean, colleges look at what's the actual course. You got a, an A in what? That's really what they want to know in the most advanced math class that we have or um, in an elective that, you know, met for a semester. They look at that pretty closely. Okay. <laughs> Luckily it was empty. Um, so I was wondering then, why we do away with waiting the classes? We're not doing away with, we don't wait the classes. We haven't. We never have. In many years, yeah. I don't know, way why before my time. Why wouldn't we do that? Um, I think that there's just a, there's different philosophies of different school systems of that. And what you have sometimes is that kids are taking classes for the weight, not for um, the progression of what they should be taking. Um, and then it's asking, you're adding value to certain classes and not to others. So I think it's a philosophy, and again, that was way prior to my time, it's a philosophy that I support where we don't have, and a, a lot of research is coming out about the competition of kids who are trying to get class rank and things and what anxiety that adds to kids and we don't have that here. So that's that's not something that our kids are battling with. If they're if they're number 11 trying to get into the top 10, it's that's not something that's even in our, our kids kind of realm right now. Hmm. Um, do their guidance counselors talk to them about how that's what colleges will look at, though, when they are looking at their transcript, is really how challenging the classes were that they took? Yeah, absolutely. So, And kids all have a four-year planner. Their guidance counselor does one. Last year, they each did their own as well to think about what their four-year plan would be, and they see it on one sheet of paper, and they're looking at what, how much are you challenging yourself. Any other questions on this? Uh, I'm glad we didn't start this at like 10:15 some night in May, though. I mean, this was a good discussion, I think. And, oh, sorry. Lindsay has one more. I'm sorry, I'm nitpicking on this acceleration. What do you mean by acceleration? Does it mean? Uh, I think it's before high school. This would be like you're in third grade and mean? you skip fourth. So you skip a grade. I think that's what this is, what is re that? referencing. Is that, is that what? Becky? Well, and we also have in. Uh, 
the the seventh and eighth grade, the the clustering and math. So I, I think it can mean either. So sometimes acceleration, you know, if you, and I think we have examples of this. We have students, probably we see it the most in math, where they might be placed into, skip a grade and be placed into the next year's class. So yeah, I think, I think, I think the you, kind of language that I was, I was um, hoping for, um, and I'm just doing this on the spot, so, but it's just fodder for in the next round or something. But something a little bit more like RSU five will provide opportunities for acceleration as necessarily as necessarily possibly including you know moving ahead a grade in a certain course, developing you know alternative you know whatever these internship things like all these things that we are doing as a district, like lay it out there like what are the possibilities that we mean to offer students because I think we we are intending to do this um, and I think we have different terms flying around we have differentiation flying around we have this is a new term for me acceleration I've never even heard of that um, and then we have these like <coughs> alternative pathways idea which I think could be considered you know an acceleration like if you're just like super advanced in biology or something and then you go design some internship at a doctor's office or something I mean isn't isn't this all acceleration or am I kind of fuzzing you know fuzzy edges to this well I think it's all worth laying out I don't know that you want to do that in your policy mm. okay so I think that is more you know backup material to the policy I'm so just gonna right here you, I'm just gonna press you why because I'm curious I, mean, I, I can add to that too. I mean, I, I would say for the high school, we would outline that in the program of studies. If this is a K to uh, pre-K to 12 policy, what we define as acceleration. So for us, that would be early graduation, which we have some students doing now. You know, there's a lot of different ways, but that's defined already in our program of studies of how a student would go about accessing different programs, different pathways, and and early graduation. Mm -hmm. So this is more like the laws, right? And and mm -hmm. the back, you know, there are many ways to kind of get there, but it's mm -hmm. not meant to be all inclusive in your policy, because then when you start trying to do that and you leave something out, well then, you're creating that. It's not meant. I don't think a policy is ever meant to be all inclusive. Mm hmm. I just feel like it's being it's omitting what we're by law offering, I mean, we're offering gate programs, we're offering, you know, let's put in here. But I don't know if a gate, like having your kid in a gifted and talented program is qualifies as acceleration. Why not? Because that's just, that's the same program. I mean, that's, that's studying in your grade level to the next level. Like, so differentiation, they're not getting quite enough in their classroom well, I teacher. I don't necessarily think gate has defined that though, I mean. Well, I mean, they're involved in the decision whether something gets accelerated. I mean, may, maybe defining what acceleration <laughs> means, I don't know, but I think this is to say this is how you would go about if mm -hmm. there were to be an acceleration. This is how it would be a decision based on these people input. Mm -hmm. Same with retention, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I, I wouldn't say that we need to spell it all out and actually enumerate all the ways that we do allow acceleration, but I how to agree with, with um, Lindsay, some people may not know what acceleration means. So defining that term somewhere in this policy, maybe it's just a reference at the end of the policy. Uh, if people are gonna be confused about what acceleration means, then we need to define that term. I, I guess what I would add about that, I think there's a lot of terms, because you'd have to do that for retention as well. That's mm -hmm. right above, which I think is far more far more damaging to a student when we're retaining them. And so we would want parents to be really clear about that. I just don't know that, again, that that would fit in a policy, because I think that that's gonna depend on grade level and school and so many different elements that go into that. And I agree, it doesn't have to be part of the policy itself, but mm. as we spoke about our statement of values, and you said it's gonna be in the program of studies, somewhere we need to define these terms if people are going to be confused about what we're really talking about. So I would say one place that might be appropriate with that, we've started making the 
handbooks that you saw around proficiency. That would be a place that I think would be, uh, I love that you all think that people are reading these policies. <laughs> 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 so I love that about RSU5. I, you don't find that everywhere. Uh, but I, I just think that there would be more. I think what you're bringing up is very important. I just don't think it lives in the policy. All right. And if she's thinking, I don't know if she's got something to say. One more thought. Okay. It's not strictly related to the policy, but you mentioned um, that you guys were working on the profile for the school. And when Brian Campbell was here last year, basically explaining, last year or the year before, <laughs> explaining um, the new grading system, he very frequently stressed the point that it's a school profile that really counts now. I actually did go to look at the school profile back then just to see what he was talking about. It didn't really shine. So I'm glad that you're working on it, and um, if that's going to be the tool that colleges really pay attention to, then I hope you make us shine. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. And just real quick, yes. I, I don't know that I've ever seen it. Jen's probably not seen it. Um, I, I would like to just see what the school profile, <clears throat> either currently or obviously when you've got it a little bit more polished up. That's online. Yeah. It's and past online. years. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Everything's online. That's right. We're online now. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm sorry. It's all right. Do all um, students graduate high school in eight semesters? No. Okay. Then in um, IKC on page two, we say that. Um, for cum laude, magna cum laude, um, these bands will include four honor bands, which will identify those graduating senior, seniors who at the end of the seventh semester have a grade point average of the following. And that's also repeated in the next paragraph. So I was wondering if we should say something like the second sem or the first semester of the senior year or something like that. Sure. Yeah, we can do that. That's not actually something. So that's been in the one on I on that page has been in place for a long time. I think we just kept the language the same, um, but we could certainly change that to the beginning, the, the end of the first semester of senior year. Right. Because I would imagine it probably isn't folks that are taking more than eight semesters probably aren't coming in at summa cum laude, maybe. It's, so it hasn't been not usually. raised as an issue before. But it, I mean, it's a good point. I mean, if we're. Yeah. Okay. All right, I'm not seeing any hands go up. All right, so we need a motion for the first read, first thorough read of these guys. Valley, Sarah, all those in favor? None opposed. So we'll see this back at our next meeting, I think, for a second read? Yes. Okay. So on to the workshop. Uh, 1718 board work plan. So in your packets, just beyond that packet for policies is, uh, oh, and Ginny apologized for doing them all on white paper. <laughs> I think she had a, I don't know, she said, they all came out on white paper, I'm sorry. <laughs> so it's also white. Uh, 7A. 9A. 9? Sorry. It's not on color, I can't read it. <laughs> Uh, so this is just a, a draft. We really don't need a, a vote or anything, but it's just to make you aware of what uh, we have for the work ahead of us. And uh, so we have everything kind of scheduled, so I'm open to feedback around that, other than there's nothing in here for the negotiations. So we'll add that as needed. And but. And then some of the routine items like the superintendent's report, finance report, those are just regularly scheduled. But this is everything we have beyond that based upon uh, the, the work we have in front of us this year. Can I make a wish or something else to add to the work plan? Uh, GT has changed a lot from last year to this year. 
um, I think even GT parents are confused about what it is that the kids are getting. I would love to have a workshop on GT so that we know what exactly that program that program is offering. Yeah. And the other workshop that I don't know if you can fit it in or not, but science and technology, uh, we haven't really reviewed what we do K through 12 um, in science and technology, or mostly K through 8. Um, it used to be that the science was more teacher dependent than maybe we would want it to be. And then technology has changed so much with uh, literacy of the use of online resources that I would like to know uh, what it is that we're teaching our kids in both those areas, science and technology. So I guess I'll put that out there for a discussion. I think um, the GT in some ways makes a lot of sense what you're requesting because we're trying this new model. Uh, and so I think even in the, uh, when we get to the board goals, we had put in the action steps that we would do updates around that. And so um, I think that makes sense. I worry about adding the science and technology, not because I don't think it's needed, but I just think uh, there's a lot on the plate. Yeah, I agree. So is there any way that the board can ever have access to that information not at a meeting, but maybe you can just send out a description or in one of your updates to the board, you can describe the programs that we're, that we're doing and then if we have questions, we can ask you directly? It's yes, just for information. I, it's yes, not really I to think, make any decisions. Right. If you're just, if the request of the board is just to have some information, can you tell us where we currently are at with our science curriculum? I think that Cynthia can provide that and send that out with without a problem. If you're talking about a, a true review, like we did with math last year, that's much more intensive. Right. And I just don't think if we go forward with the strategic planning that we probably have the capacity this year. <laughs> Naomi. Um, I'd like to see the GT um, kind of presented to sooner rather than later, preferably. Um, I've always found it very <laughs> confusing. And so now we're changing things. And it's, yeah, it's, it's very confusing. So I would like to see it, like I said, sooner rather than later, just so we're going into the year, we kind of know what's going on. So I am open to suggestions about which one you would want to see that on. Oh, uh, well, I mean, or just, okay, how about some parameters like, are you saying before uh, the holiday break or, you know, something like that. Uh, I would say it would be probably beneficial to give us uh, you know, maybe through October to get the new structure up and running before we're then reporting out on it. I, while it already looks like a long meeting, the 25th, I think several of those things, I mean, the budget timeline, the update where they, you mm -hmm. know, do something from the school. Uh, Dennis's plan is usually 10 or 15 minutes, maybe a little bit more. Approve members of the, the committee. I mean, that is just voting on who's going to be on that committee, right? Mm -hmm and then policies. I mean, most of those, none of those seem to be heavy lifting. Okay. I do know we sometimes, well, <laughs> depending on what, try and go with an easy policy that day. <laughs> um, you know, I think, um, you know, other than the potential for the policies, most of those aren't super heavy lifting. So that might be yeah. a, that might be a good spot for it. I think that makes sense because I think we will have the program underway and can report on what we see as the strength and weaknesses and upgrades. Okay. And then as it relates to the science piece, I mean, are others interested in, you know, what our science curriculum is? Do we want to, do we want to have asked them to put together some sort of overview? No, I mean, it never hurts to have more information, but it takes manpower and it takes them away from doing something else. So right. do we feel it's important enough to take them away from doing other things to put this together for us? I think that would need more discussion. I mean, I, I don't think that, I think like what you're saying, to take people away from doing like what we're already doing. I mean, you can see what a curriculum is, right? I mean, you can get a general idea even just at the school level right well I think that part of and, and I, I don't want to I mean, speak I, to her 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 reasons behind it but I think some of it was there was some 
vast differences in the science curriculum between schools. Like some schools had no defined science curriculum, and they're trying to bring them in line. You know, so if, and it's if not like you go to the website for any particular school and you can see the science curriculum that right. doesn't exist. No, I wasn't saying that. I meant like you could go to a teacher or a administrator. I guess. Yeah, but then right. Yeah. But you talk to yeah, your so, kids' yeah. teacher I mean, I, and this right. another teacher in the same grade level, maybe doing some, doing something entirely different. Right. I guess it would. I, I would say taking the lead from Becky in terms of is that something that you're looking at as being important to? I mean, I don't know how the math thing came up, but I wasn't here for that. But the math curriculum was completely changed. There must have been a lot of reasoning for that. Well, there is, and, and you know, our data currently shows that's an area that we need to focus on. And, you know, I agree with Valley that if I had to guess right now, we do not have a systemic, consistent science curriculum. So, you know, I can say that currently. Uh, is it going to be fairly easy for us to put a document together saying, in kindergarten, we're inconsistent across the district. It is. So, is that what I, it's going to say? I mean, yeah, you, you just tell us right now. That? <laughs> <laughs> Save your the, yeah, the typing. Right. right. Yeah. And so, if that's what you're asking for, we can put that together, and it's not a heavy lift to do that. Uh, if you're asking for us to get consistent and and to do a, a review of the science curriculum, uh, with the purpose of improving science achievement. That, I think, is not doable unless this year, unless something else comes off here. I guess what I would see is, why don't you start with where you see our curriculum today, right? Like, yeah, this is yeah. this is kind of where we are. And, um, and if we all find it unacceptable to what we'd like to see, then that becomes part of the strategic plan of, hey, this is our, this is our three-year plan for this district. Mm -hmm. We want to be consistent in science, and how are we going to get there? So, I mean, I think it's probably a multi-step process of, okay, let's find out where we are today, because I think we can honestly say we don't know. Um, and then from there, we can decide if it, we need to elevate it to that next level of the strategic plan. I do have something that I was going to bring up with, under goals. Yeah, but since we're talking about how to allocate time and resources, maybe I'll bring it up now. Yeah, but the strategic plan is something that I've always been in favor of doing. However, I'm having second thoughts about that today. And it, that's based on the conversation we had last meeting about accessibility of data going back in time for achievement for our students. And frankly, all, this, all the strategic plans that I've seen are very data driven mm. and they should be mm. and if we don't have that historical data to go back far enough to produce a good strategic plan to move us forward then I would rather postpone the strategic plan until we have three years accumulated of data for the same cohort so we can follow them through we can see if it's just a cohort that's not performing and not whatever model or program we're giving our kids um, so that's something to throw out there, maybe prematurely, but since we're talking about this now, um, I feel like we're doing great progress with the things that we already have on our plate. Um, a plan of that magnitude, well done, is a huge undertaking, and I'm not sure that's where we want to devote our resources right now this year. Definitely, I want to do it at some point. I'm not sure uh, we're equipped to do a good job with what we currently have in hand. Unless you tell me that we actually have saved all the NIWA data and that we can go back five years and we can see exactly where we're at. But uh, what I've heard last meeting makes me believe that we don't have that data right now. I almost would like to, I mean, and we can, well, uh, we can talk about it, I guess, in, in the goals. Um, yeah, let, let's just get back to the science piece first. Um, is that something that you guys can put yep. together? First? And we'll send that out in a one of the board updates. Okay, so I just I just want to do through the work mm -hmm. plan and then we'll yep. get back to the strategic, because I think that's a good point. Um, just, I just brought it up now, because if we decide not to, then we may have, have more some time to do capacity, some of the other right. things. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure we'll fill those meetings, don't worry. <laughs> 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 we have that knack. Um, is there anything else that people, you know, are sort of dying to see on our on our agenda? <laughs> yes. 
I think you're up. Uh, two discussions here that I think are um, very important to have, class size, funding formula. Um, class size, as we saw last year, is going to be more than just a workshop. Mm -hmm. To do this well, we need to have you know, plenty of public comment, and it needs to end up with a formal vote. So I think that this is a great beginning for that discussion, to have a workshop in October. Uh, but I would love to see that come up again with a formal vote on a business meeting, um, and also just have even, I would even go as far as, you know, public hearing or at least advertise plenty of opportunity for public comment. Um, and then on the funding formula, this is something also that um, it's at the business meeting now. I think we need to have a workshop also for that. Um, the way that we have that RPC formula written now it needs to be changed. We can't just say we like it the way it is and we can keep it. Because uh, I was digging up for it and I called the state to see if they had it because I wanted to find out how do we fund um, additional local monies. And they actually said that we need to have a formula with variables so we can just continue using the formula we have without even knowing where it came from or what the variables are or not changing anything from year to year. So this is going to be a bigger discussion than, than just one meeting. Hmm. Our understanding was that we don't have to change the funding formula based on what our discussions with them last year. Um, we actually talked about this at our finance committee meeting today that we had we had done a meeting on it last year. Um, and when it got raised again as something we wanted to talk about this year, we acknowledged that perhaps we didn't report out to the full board um, what the how that uh, discussion had gone. Um, and our plan was to do that this year, which it is on here for for um, for a discussion uh, in December. So, um, I mean, we'll do a little bit of research prior to that meeting, of course, and and to, you know check in with the DOE. Uh, I hadn't heard that they were, were requiring us to change anything. Um, there are certainly well, there's a variety of ways that people do it. So yeah, I think it's worth calling them up again. Yeah, because what I was told was. I don't even know how we approve this plan. We don't have any other district in the state that has a formula that doesn't show variables. And I think they're approved. <laughs> right, and the person, aware, yeah. I can give you the name later, but she yeah. said basically this shouldn't be this way. Yeah, so um, we'll follow up on that. Yeah. The class size, is that something that we decide as a board and vote, or is it a policy we create, or is it a, in the strategic plan? <laughs> So my intent was for us to have a discussion here that night. Uh, Cynthia and I have already started prepping for that a little bit by gathering policies from, you know, the cohort you compare yourself to a lot, and that we'll do that presentation. I think eventually what that'll be is a policy, and you'll end up voting on the policy. Right, so I think that the 11th is step one, and Correct. based on what comes out of that will be, I mean, which is why we don't want to backload this too much, because some of these things will carry through a couple of times through the year. Okay. All right, uh, B, 9B is the budget timeline. Kind of hard to think that our first business meeting, and we already have the budget timeline written but that's good to be ahead of the time head of the head of the ball um, this is uh, on the on your plan that we just looked at uh, this isn't for anything but your information tonight and to have a little bit of a discussion uh, it's on the agenda right now for October the 25th where we would vote on it and approve it uh, and to me I just mapped out what we something similar to what we did last year and I guess my only question that I'm uh, seeking some input on is the pro forma uh, whether you still would like that and if we do I think we might do it a little bit different than we did it previously 
So could you tell us what would be different so we yeah. can decide? <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so last year, I think what we did was there was just kind of this automatic 3% increase everywhere. And then later on, uh, when we were looking for reduction, remember how we went back in and we said, well, we really don't need 3% uh, in all lines because the telephone bill hasn't gone up in you know, the past five years. So I think that if I were presenting one that was a little bit different, I would really just be presenting things uh, where we either were basing it on historical data uh, or it was uh, factual, right? And my concern this year is that I'm not sure we're going to be through uh, negotiations. So last year, um, you know, we knew it was it was easy to say. We know that in the teacher contract that we need to increase it by a certain amount. I'm not sure we're going to have that this year by when it December 13th. Yes. So those I are think some it of would my be concerns. a miracle if we knew that by December 13th. But because I feel like last time we did negotiations, we didn't even start until January. Is that right? Yeah. 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 Well, so, so. Um, you know, and it's an interesting question because I think the pro for we didn't do a pro forma in the year that the last year we did negotiations. We, I think we started it that following year. Um, so we we can't go back and say how did we do it that time because we didn't do it. I mean, the pro forma was really two years ago was the last was the first time we did it. Um, so I think it is harder not knowing that number because that is the biggest variable in our budget is our people and and their salaries. Um, I, I would agree that I like the idea of not just putting a blanket, you know, 3% on everything or, or whatever you decide the number is, um, you know, really targeting it on the areas that you think are likely to grow. Um, I think that would be helpful. Um, but, I mean, is it is it a useful document of their time if the biggest variable we don't know yet? I think it's really useful for the community at large to know what the increase would be without any new things added. Right. So the baseline. So the baseline, it is. So, I mean, that's the one that we can always turn to and say, well, if we didn't add anything, you would still get X percent increase. I think it's very yeah, useful. But that X so percent is based on something long, for yeah, a, As long so. as it's something that approximates reality, if you can, you know, come close enough, it doesn't have to be perfect. <laughs> so <remember> just, that. <laughs> when so just come back previously, it us? hasn't been based on that. So if that's the direction, yes, it, yeah, no, it has. I mean, that well, was the I mean, premise. to me, when you add three percent, no, but no. The, in terms right. of like staffing levels, right? This assumes we don't have any new programs. This assumes we don't add additional, you know, stipends. This is this, if but, if we rolled forward exactly who walked out the door at the end of June back into the building in September, this is what the budget would look like. And really it was to capture how much of our budget is dependent on that salary line for our people, which we won't know. Right. Okay. So I think then you do what you do know, which is what the status quo is, whatever the increase would be if you continued under whatever the contract says now, right? They would, they would be yeah. flat. They would be flat funded. There's nothing. I mean, there is no contract what after. What was the increase last year, though? Right. So we right? could we could assume that yeah. we, we negotiate so the do, same. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You assume, or whatever the increase was at the first year of the contract that we're in now. I don't know. But you can make some assumptions, and then you just qualify it, saying, if this is if we negotiations come out at the, like they did three years ago, right? Mm -hmm. You still don't know the health insurance, but you're. Do you know have the number for that by then? No, you do know that because you do that a year ahead. Right. Well, that's so that up, that's so all we, up in the air with negotiations. That's based on negotiations too. Well, that's true. Becky, yeah. in your <laughs> everything's a variable next year. Becky, in, in other districts, have you not done any pro forma? Like, how does that roll? Because I I agree with Viola. Like, it has been really like a touchstone for us throughout the process. Like as we're deciding whether or not to add or take away teachers or whatever, we kind of refer to that. So because we're I able hear to the dilemma, it, but yeah. I'm like, how do we frame our decisions then if we don't have that number? How, how is that going in other districts? I mean, the so performance, oh, sorry. Uh, 
So in Portland, you, they just didn't, you know, they rolled out whatever the bud, the recommended budget was. So instead of getting the pro forma, so what happened last year, you got, you received the pro forma, and then I did a, a month later the presentation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of other districts just wait for that presentation, and so you know, this is it, right? And then you explain in there, this is based upon that. I, and I don't mind doing a pro forma. I just feel like we shouldn't automatically add three percent to every line i mean i'm i'm happy to do a pro forma where we you know say this is based upon you know the 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 teachers getting this the first year but then i don't know how that impacts how that negotiation yeah. Yeah. that's I mean, what i'm thinking i mean and that, i mean that i think this really like hairy like yeah, it does these, yeah and, yeah. and, and are like, you we negotiating don't too much right and like we're in the so middle, this yeah. year is just i think I'm not talking about from now till eternity. I'm just talking about I think this year presents some different challenges. So, which is why I'm bringing the right, question. Right, because if we put 3% and then, you know, we go back and say we're offering you 2, be like, "Well, you already told everybody 3." Yeah. Right. Or they demand 4 and then you're like, "Well, and then the the public says, "Well, you told us 3." I mean, just flatline uh, flatline flat wages because everybody knows that's not going to happen. That's not true, actually. A lot of people feel like they should flat, like, just cap it. It's flat. But, I mean, which but, we know but, but is we not don't lose real, anything else. realistic. But, and then I think you under, I mean, if you flatline it, we're going to blow people out of the water when we give them the real number in, in a month or two later when we have it. Like, then it looks like a, whoa, that was, the, that, was your, that was your roll forward of nothing changes and you did all of this? Where'd that come from? Negotiations. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it makes it really clear wh where our increase comes from. That does bring up the point, like, why go through that? Why, why jostle people's perceptions of what's going to happen? I mean, why just say this is what we recommend? So could we have the performa be presented later? It doesn't have to be the first thing during the budget season. It could come last if that's what we actually have a number to produce to to present to the public. I mean, the usefulness of this pro forma budget for me is that we can point to the community that all else absent, all new things absent from the budget, this is what your raise would be. And, and I think that is a helpful number to have. And I think I might be in favor of, you know, it's it's not the first thing in the process. It's a page in our packet. Right. Right. It's like a selling point at the end. Yeah, Once right. we have approved our budget, we but don't if, need to have it way in the beginning of the season. If, if we do it that way, then it's not a pro forma. Right. We can separate our budget and say, this is our budget with all variables that have to change, like our phone bill going up or whatever. That's what had to change. And then, then we can have another layer of the budget. This is what we wanted to add or we right. did add, but it wouldn't be a pro forma. And this is the negotiations. Oh, absolutely. That can be part of the regular presentation of, you know, this is where the increases are coming from. Yeah, I think that's the helpful part. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't really make sense to do a pro forma because for this year we're going to have variables that we don't know the answers to. And, and making assumptions could hurt our right. abilities and to you do know, other things on either side. And at first I was thinking, all right, come out with just the things we know. But then, you know, that's going to be a small, small part of the budget. Exactly. We know <laughs> very little, Beth. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Paper towels, right. <laughs> we know how much nothing is cost, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, it doesn't make sense to do it, I don't think. It's too much work. You know, why bother doing that? Because it's going to be changed. It's too much in the assumptions. Okay. So, so I think we take it off our timeline, and it just gets built into, you know, our budget review cycle and, and the packet that we eventually come out of. Candy, John, do you have something? You're good. Then you want okay. to share with the class? <laughs> Anything you'd like to share with the class? Okay. That, that'll, sure give us, that'll give us more time on the 13th on the funding formula. There we go. Good. Making time already. Nice work, people. <laughs> All right. So we're not voting on this until October, but that's just a heads up. Yes. Um, the Q&A format doesn't seem to be very effective. I I have never been a, I think, I mean, I'm sorry if I misremember, but I cannot recall being approached by somebody with a question I think or only providing an answer for that matter. So Pownal, pownal a couple have, people. But it's very, it's, it, it would so take 10 minutes, small. not a half hour. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. d d 
I do want to go to all three communities, share information, but is that Q&A thing? I mean, I liked it's just it kind of a buzzkill to me. I liked it when we had sandwiches. Yeah. yeah. That was and better. Food. Or salads. Yeah. It was way better. We called it something. What did we call it? Dinner. Dine and discuss. <laughs> dine, dine and discuss. Dine and discuss. That's right. It was but dine we, and yeah. discuss. I don't, I don't. We, we dubbed it something high-end. else. And that way we eat dinner if no one shows up. That's right. Because you know. <laughs> that's really the half hour when I eat. Yeah. I do recall people came to that, yeah. though. Yeah, they did. And we sat at tables and we met community members. <laughs> Food always draws food, people. Yeah. It's the key. Particularly it's if we're going to have better food this year. <laughs> yeah. Um, That's my. Do people like dine and discuss better than the Q and A? Yeah. For reasons other than selfishly, you want dinner. <laughs> <laughs> do you think it was more productive? How about that? I, I, I'm with Lindsay. Not too many people show up, even with the food. Mm. Yeah, and I think historically, you know, they came in the beginning and then, well, they weren't very impressed. And then <laughs> they didn't like our answers. <laughs> and then the fact that we didn't have food, and then they're like, so what? They so never just came back. If we add food in, do you think that's going to bring more people back? I really don't think it will. Yeah. What there about th just like, do, don't do it earlier than the regular, but just do the regular board meeting and like have a 15 minute review of the budget and invi invitation for questions. I mean, what, why, what is a Q&A getting us? I mean, what's the so I think the point was to provide people, because I mean, in theory, we're not supposed to have discourse back and forth, right? Oh. There's, they get up, they tell us their comments, they sit down. They're not supposed to be able to ask us questions and then we respond because that can have open all sorts of cans of worms because you would kind of have to do it on everything. Um. Um, but oh. so that prov that gave people the opportunity and some people frankly are not comfortable getting up at a microphone on camera and yeah. asking their question whereas if they could just come up to Naomi and say hey can you explain this to me and I say go find Kate yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think a lot of it was the fact that yeah p people didn't want to get up we were thinking that people didn't want to get up to the microphone and ask the questions in public on camera live stream now um, so we were yeah. giving them a chance to talk to people individually. And during withdrawal, that whole process, we did have a lot of people come out right. and, yeah. and discuss. But after that was done, it kind of died down. Died down a yeah. bit. So I mean, maybe we set something up where we just have some other meeting, which is like a Q and A, right? You know, and not have it before a board meeting, and maybe just do it once and. Well, we don't. We do want to do something in all three towns. Well, we're going to all three towns, and people are always welcome to come to all three meetings. Mm. Um, huh. I mean, but you're right. I mean, not a lot of people come. But I, mean, I, I think, think it's we worth it trying there. something different. Yeah. I, mean, I would so, be against trying, okay, just one day at Q&A, and then if nobody shows up, we just go. Cool. Cool. And we'll Ma see if anybody complains afterwards that we didn't do it. Maybe we could market our new uh, nutrition director, and she can showcase her food, and people might be excited to come. That's right. Or the board members will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll definitely be there. Well, we, um, have, we have a public hearing. Yeah, but our goal is That's for before all that. Our goal is for them to ask questions prior to that. Right. In theory, I mean, well. ideally, we wouldn't have the person get up and say, "Hey, can you explain the budget to me at the Tri Town meeting?" Right? Like, hopefully, it happens every year. I know. <laughs> we're, we're constantly looking for public input, and by not having it, we're closing down an avenue for them to have input. If they choose not to, you know, that's out of our control. But, mm -hmm. but let's not take away an opportunity that we've presented to them to come and. Right, because there is a few people who come. I mean, there's. Um, yeah. It's interesting because I if think they more choose people. Not to, then that's their choice, that's right? Their and then they choice, can't say we let's didn't not ask. Take away that opportunity. It's a half hour. We, you know. And frankly, we historically, we haven't all 11 been there, and that's been fine, because there's never been 11 people with a question to ask at the same time. So, But wait, why is the Q&A then after the public hearing if we want to avoid people asking to explain the budget in the public it's hearing? It's before the public hearing. The annual budget meeting is on the 23rd. Well, it's before the annual What's March 14th? Public hearing on March 14th. Oh, so it's not really, that's not really a public hearing. That's a sort of a misnomer on here because that's a legal term. We should probably strike that. Um, yeah, I mean, that's the one where um, where we're deliberating and we want people to, right. you know, get up oh, and... Oh, it's public comment. We public, co it's well, public there's always public comment, but yeah, public hearing is a legal term. I don't think we want to include input. that on there. Well, 
<laughs> public input. No, it's a, pre it's a presentation on the budget, right? No, this is when the board decides. We, we this is when this is our last meeting where we adopt the budget in those last two meetings. So this is kind of where we want to hear people before we vote mm -hmm. so that they don't bring up something on the floor. But is this also when Becky stands up and does the PowerPoint explaining the budget? Is no, that on the same that's hearing? In January. But don't you do one later? We usually have one later in the season. Did I do a brief public. one? I think I did a brief one. Yeah, 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 at the cafeteria. Yeah, we do I go to the cafeteria and, and you do I think have we a presentation. Were making, we, I mean, the thing about doing it in January, there's a lot we still don't know. So <laughs> I think I did do something because we had more numbers, information, yeah. right, right? Around yeah. maybe Beaumar and the Hunter Fields. And, and because a lot more people show up. In January, people are not really queued into budget, but by middle of March, yeah. they do show up. And I don't think we shouldn't have that. I just think public hearing is a legal term. That, I mean, we're not doing public notice. Like, let's right. be. Let's make sure we're following the right rules here. So let's call it, you know, public input on the budget. I think input works. Are you sure? Are you mm -hmm. sure? It's we're not giving notice of the annual budget meeting and a hearing. We. I don't believe we've had to do that in the past, but I'll check with Ginny. To me, it doesn't make sense, and I, it, this was like, I think going around to the different communities, we were kind of um, explaining our budget and you know answering questions, but at that point, it's already done. It, it, right, selling. we cannot make any change. The budget is already done. So if we go to Durham and they say, "Hey, you know, we didn't like the way you added, you know, that's ten dollars to come. this subject," we're like, "Well, yeah, sorry, it's already done." You know, yeah. that's why people don't come. It's like, what's the point? Yeah, They're I, gonna change I think what we used to do back in the olden days is yeah. we used to go around before, yeah. before we started, even before we started the budget, the and then there was workshops and, you know, said, okay, this is what looks like we're going to do, you know, what are your concerns, what are your, and people would say, you know, I want more buses, I want more, you know, math teachers, I want this, so we could get all this input, and even way back, we used to go to different schools into the PTC meetings and right. we would do this big um we'd have this big white paper and you know what are your what do you like what don't you like and people would write it all down and then it would come they uh correlate it all and bring it to the meeting and everybody would the board members would get information about what everybody else wanted hmm. and then they could you'd form your budget using that as a guide Hmm. Well, I, I believe the reason we stopped doing the adopt the budget after we went to the three towns is we were adopting the budget on May 9th right. or even later than May 9th right. and we had like seven days to inform people about what our adopted budget was before we expected them to show up and vote on it. And that was the problem. Right. We were, we were no, cutting can't it. Can't we find a happy medium? No, I think if you put three meetings above this and move this, I mean, you're, you're, uh, I don't know if you can rearrange it. I mean, can you like do? I mean, the workshops. If you rotated the bu the three budget review workshops, I mean, couldn't you rotate those through the town and have the question and answer? Yeah, absolutely. And PES and then you could have the other three that where we were gonna rotate just be here. Just kind of swap that. So what? Mm -hmm. So like. Yeah. If you like DCS could also present when we're at DCS, right? And PES could present when we're at PES. You mean add yeah. to it then? Yeah. yeah. And then these just become regular meetings here, right? And we still adopt it on March twenty eighth. Right. Right, but we've already been to the school, and you and know, the people questions. had their chance at the yeah. diamond done and discuss to. <laughs> Dine or discuss. <laughs> so, so here's my problem, though, is I feel like those first couple meetings are all presentation, and everything else happens after that. So, if they have comment on that, they've now missed their yeah. shot I mean, to I ask questions. Saying. I mean, really, that you know, the 14th and the 28th is is where everything kind of goes into flux. That's why, yeah, the Q&A, yeah. if, if it's a Q&A, I mean, if, if you, we want it to be a back and forth discussion, I mean, it should be before we make our decisions. That's how people can influence us. So can we have a half an hour of Q&A on the 14th, March 14th? Can I just keep one? By then, one? by then, we would should probably have all of our information, and Michelle should be ready with papers. Isn't that too late? Well, the 20, no, the 28th is when we, like, vote 
on the budget to adopt okay. the budget, okay. right? So we've given our we used to do it all all in one, I think. Right. So we've we've realized that we are not that um, efficient that we get through all of our discussions and vote on the same day. So <laughs> we we we've spread it out over two, and sometimes we add a third one in there. Um, so I think I should have meeting Jeffy. Yeah. Wednesday. We, we pretty much do. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I think my my thought around the Q&A was not, I'm asking you a question and you're providing me the feedback of what you want us to do. It's, here's our budget. What are your questions about our budget so I can help you be informed to vote at the three town meeting? Mm -hmm. Like, that's, that's my understanding of what those Q&As were for, is to help people understand what our budget is so that they, they feel confident voting yes or no or whatever they want to vote, but informed. And those are the questions I have gotten in right. the past, is what is this for, what is, you know, that kind of stuff. So, I mean, I, well, I get it. Because at that point, they have no, you know, they can't say, well, I really would have rather seen but something they, else they, added. We have public hearing at every one of these, I mean, public comment at every one of these. If yeah. someone, w yeah. you know, got up and listened to the to the DCS presentation and said, gosh, I don't like that, I, I we should really be doing more of this, then, you know, we're never stopping people from providing their input. We added those in to specifically target people who felt uninformed about what our budget said, because previously we were doing it in such a tight time frame, there was just not enough time to get up to speed. Yeah. So, I mean, that's my thought on what those are for. If we want them to be more, hey, tell us what you think we should be doing, then I think we need to reschedule it. But I don't know if that's what we want. Naomi, I did know. I call on you? <laughs> <laughs> Naomi, thank you. So I know how much we all love to come at six, a half hour early for our, for these meetings. So maybe we could just add one to the March 14th. That way, if there's people who have questions, who don't feel comfortable getting up in front of the microphone, that would present a chance for them to you know ask individuals, and then we're not taking away that explanation later down the road. Mm -hmm. And maybe to offset, we can just make the Q&A for the other three dates shorter. Maybe not a full half hour, but maybe 20 minutes or 15 minutes. Yeah. We're or usually done in less than 15 minutes with the answers <laughs> You're and the questions. Less than 15 minutes. I mean, I, I don't have a problem coming a half an hour early. And you know, if we have a couple of people there, we can field most of the questions. So I mean, I think we leave it at 6, because that's kind of what gives people a bit of a window. and. And under it's understood that if you can't make it at six, then that's okay. Okay. What? No, we don't have to vote. This is this is just our info. It's our efficiency at work. Recap. Okay. So we are going to remove the pro forma from the December thirteenth from this timeline, and we're going to roll it into the full package that we present throughout the year. We are going to add a uh, thirty-minute Q and A to the March fourteenth workshop. Prior, and we're going to change that to public input, assuming Ginny doesn't tell us it's a legal public hearing. Mm -hmm. And I think that we left and the rest the same. The and we're going to keep the others the same. And, are we making them dine and discuss, or are we keeping them yeah. Q&A? Naomi wants dinner. Ask Aaron. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I, do th I do think... I yes. I do think more people come out when there's food. <laughs> so maybe or we feel more relaxed to sit down next to you at a table yeah, it does kind of ease the social Yeah, situation. awkwardness. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thanks. So, potentially we make it a D and d not a Q&A. <laughs> okay. All right. Goals. Okay, so uh, at, the, at our last workshop, you asked me to um, take a stab at these. And so that's what we have done. And we did add the strategic planning one so I think this would be the time for the discussion around that uh, we uh, what what you're doing tonight is voting on the you have the backup materials also but what you're really voting on are the the big goals um, but we've kind of fleshed those out with uh, where we think we are with the implementation of the proficiency based learning is is continued from last year the teacher administrator effectiveness 
that's continued from last year and then your big new one is the um, district strategic plan the two that we had decided to remove is the um, cre the creation of the facilities because we're hoping that that will be complete mm, we were knowing uh, that we were <laughs> in the near future and, and I'm happy to report the high school is uh, 99 point something uh, complete we're just having punch list items left on that the um, the the track and field is proving to be a little bit more challenging but we're hoping to have that completed at some point this fall so we didn't see the need for one of your bid big board goals to be around that and we also decided that we'll continue to work on unity and pride but it won't be a standalone goal so that's what you have before you and um, happy to take any input that you have on those question um what is this um under a strategic objective to improve teacher and administrative effectiveness create plan for administrators to calibrate together what does that mean so by statute we have to make sure that we're doing something every year so that uh, a teacher that's getting a three on a rubric at Pownell Elementary, that if, if there was a similar teacher at Freeport Middle School, they would also be receiving the three. So we do different things. Uh, last year we went through classrooms and then we came back and discussed that. This year we might be watching a video together, having administrators score it, and then comparing how we scored everything in discussions around that. So is to really prevent bias or to have one evaluator uh, scoring a lot more harder than another one. Because I imagine that could be difficult, right? I mean, we've all had jobs where you get your evaluation and you do great and then you get a new boss and you do the exact same job and then it's not as great anymore. You're like, well, what happened? So okay. consistency, I think, will be key. Um, I guess I'll speak to the the strategic plan a bit um, and Valley's point about the data we would need. Um, I guess my how I envisioned the strategic plan is that it's it's almost. I mean, we're looking at doing a new comprehensive plan in Durham, and it's probably a two-year process, right? So um, I wouldn't be opposed to keeping it on here. <laughs> Are you doing that, Candy? Are you involved? I've been involved yeah. More than two years. Yeah. Well, yeah. two plus years. Um, and I mean, and that obviously has a lot of different things in it. But I would almost see the strategic plan as being a, a, a multi-year process where it could be that this year we start with the you know outlining of the of the process and how we might see it coming into place and um, you know starting to review what we have and bring in um, some some you know professionals that could help us sort of maybe just start the framework and see what information we need right like what data would help us and make sure that those are the things we're collecting right so we don't want to collect three years of data and then go oh gosh we really wish we had that because that would have really helped us just define what we wanted to do with this so I mean I guess I would be in favor of keeping it on here as as a strategic objective um, to start it and not you know kick the proverbial can down the road another couple of years because I think that's what we've we've done in the past with the whole idea of the strategic plan I think this is a nice next step to these objectives that we have put in place for ourselves for you know more discrete periods of time and and maybe it's not one of our strategic objectives on here because we want these things to all be attainable in a year but I I, I would like to see us start the process so I, I want to remind you that you have a strategic plan so we probably will start with reviewing that and looking at what do you like and you don't like in that framework but I would agree that a strategic plan is it much like what we are doing here you're probably going to have the big document that's way up right and then you when if you're going to talk about things like science and things like that, that would probably be in some backup document. And I think it would be good to start the discussion so that we're at least collecting the data you're wanting us to collect. I think that's a great way to go. 
um, we would have to change the whole timeline here because the way we have it described, we are basically done with the whole strategic plan by May and then we're communicating it to the community by July. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say that we probably want to only include steps or strategies one and two and then go collecting information to see what it is that, and data to see what it is that we need to actually be able to fulfill three to seven. So I would think that we would be able, are you looking at the backup right now? I'm looking at the, the very backup. last page yes. it's all okay. fleshed out. So I would think that we could easily get through four in year one. And then we actually start drafting and defining next year. Anyone think that's overly ambitious? I'm just wondering where we gather input from stakeholders, whether we want to have some framework for that and whether we can have that framework without having first seen data. I'm also thinking once we do involve the community and the public, we want to keep moving. We don't want to stop there mm -hmm. and then leave it for the next year because people are going to be wondering, you brought us all here, you got us all excited, and now you're just sitting on it while you collect data. So I'd rather wait for that until we know what we need and we have what we need in hand. So maybe that becomes a fall of 18. So maybe we would do, so uh, maybe I would suggest then uh, the four might be that we get through outlining the process. You know, once we hire the facilitator, we create the committee, we bring the committee together, and then we kind of outline the plan or the. And I don't see anywhere in here where we review and assess the existing one. So that could be right. an item on there too. So maybe one is review the existing strategic plan and two is start to. Right, or review it after we hire the consultant. Right. Yeah. So that one really becomes five and we make a new four. Don't you just have one action step? So we even have you can steps outline the overall process. Doesn't that cover everything? I suppose. But if we want them to be like, okay, I don't know, I prefer, I mean, if we're, if we're down in this support document with activities, I'd like to see what those activities are. And one is review and one is, you know, set up the framework, but. So wh who's outlining the overall process? I think it's this committee. Strategic so planning committee. You need to create the committee first. Right. So after three, we're going to have a new four where you're reviewing the existing strategic plan. That committee is reviewing the existing strategic plan and laying out the process going forward. Is that what you said? Well, doesn't number one need to be this? You create the committee. Oh, right. Because we already have outline overall plan. Okay. That's. <laughs> Oh, I see what you're yeah, saying. You don't have a committee, but you can outline it first. Somebody's. You can outline it first. So. <laughs> I was skipping right over one and going right to three and four. <laughs> That's a good way to get it done. I think three should be number one. Right. Three is number one. Mm -hmm. and two and is two. number two. <laughs> right. And one is number three. So we just swap yeah. one and three. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you want to vote on this? I would love a vote on the and, and remember what you're really voting on are just the three strategic overall objectives goals and that you know as you can see I'll revise the supporting document and it may be revised many times over once we you know add things to it okay so um, 
the strategic objective for the strategic strate <laughs> the strategic objective <laughs> for the strategic plan oh my um are we leaving all of the steps on here with the understanding that this isn't a one-year project or are you yes. just gonna okay yes. i think that makes sense and then the f backup will show dates that recognize the the timing okay so do we have a oh, valley i have two more points before a vote um strategic objective four we used to have stewardship of resources i don't know if we still need to have it but I want to make sure that we have action steps somewhere and maybe it's in the goals maybe it's somewhere else uh, but that we have timely audits and timely billing and that we catch up on all the billing um, I don't know if that needs to be here but that's something that I thought I should bring up as a goal for this year and the other question I had was for the improved teacher administrator effectiveness where we talk about the review and revise the principal evaluation document if you go to the document where you flesh it out, um, the first page, mm -hmm. point number five, it says um, the responsibilities with superintendent, assistant superintendent, PPG committee, and the B team. I would like to have, um, if possible, the opinion of our school lawyer to see which is the criteria that we can use. Yeah, because I was a little surprised that we weren't able to use any surveys for the PEPG for the teachers, and the whole point of rev this revision is to actually have a 360 review. So I want to know what the scope might be uh, for this kind of exercise, um, because I I would not want to see it be just something where you know you see, search for an opinion of someone you trust and. Um, you don't really involve more stakeholders uh, who can give honest and very direct feedback. So I think that that discussion can come when we get to the revision. Are you okay with that? Okay. I, I don't want to I hope I didn't misspeak. So what I'm wanted to convey is that you can't use surveys as a piece of the growth right so in both the principal and teacher evaluation by statute you have to have uh, data at as a piece of the overall evaluation it doesn't prevent you from using surveys to do goal setting or to do uh, you know just to gather information but you can't use it to say based upon this survey of your parents in your school uh, we're now you know using that as 10 percent of the growth component does that make sense yeah it does make sense but I, I mean I have this statue here and it's very ambiguous so it doesn't necessarily say you may or may not use surveys for any specific purpose so I would like to know what the parameters are that we're working within. Yes, and, and I and, and I can because provide it is you with so that ambiguous. Because, yes, so we it would be good to know which are the. I mean, here they're listed as elements of the system. Which elements can we use in this system to evaluate our administrators? Yes, I you, I can provide you with that at any time. Great. Okay. And so your other piece that you were requesting, Valley, was about the audit and the, but, it, right, I don't think it really fits under any one of these big overall goals, but I can reassure you that that's a goal of ours within, you know, with the Director of Finance. And we will ask the uh, Chair of the Finance Committee, Ms. Kate Brown, as elected today, <laughs> nominated <laughs> mis by Mr. Morung. <laughs> You don't even know how fast he got out that nomination <laughs> when Michelle said it at the Finance Committee <laughs> to um, to make sure that uh, it, in our in our updates on the Finance Committee um, we'll we'll be recognizing that as well. So, all right. Any other thoughts on the goals? Okay. Um, do we have a motion to accept the goals? Naomi, Kate, all those in favor? Opposed? No? Thank you. All right. 
o'clock. No, we are getting out of here because some of us have places to be early tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I am going to a meeting, but <laughs> poor Sarah has a flight extremely early. Uh, yeah. So, all right. So we have gotten through our new business, our policy review, and our workshop, which means um, we are look. I'm looking for a motion to enter into executive session as outlined in one MRSA section 4056A for the purpose of discussing the superintendent's evaluation. Naomi, Second. Kate, all those in favor? Opposed? No. All right. So we are in executive session. It is uh, 8:51, and we'll just give everybody else a second to the be the masses, the be the masses, the be the masses, the be the masses.